any yeah. kid that's watching Raw right now, you are the voice of Raw for them. They're like, there's only been so many ring announcers with like WWE that have gone a, a period of time that are actually whatever. And I was like, there's like 10. It's John Cena, you know what I mean? Like he's somebody that I've actually learned a lot off of. And I was fortunate enough to cross over with him. The Cody Rhodes thing at WrestleMania was awesome for me. Like it was just one of those things where it just kind of happened. I feel like this is gonna be a competition of who has taller hair I, this whole I, time. I lowered mine today. Your hair is so tall. <laughs> Look I at this. I lowered it today. This is my same hair from yesterday. No, so no joke, me too. Yeah, see? I, I've been going to bed pretty early. I have a pregnant yeah, yeah. wife, right? So we're going to bed normally at like 8.30 or nine. The show we were part of last night. Yep. You know, not same mania didn't start till eight o'clock. Right, I didn't get home till almost midnight. It was like a full raw. That was amazing. It was like almost three hours was, of wrestling. It was. It was stacked. It was fun, but I didn't get home till almost midnight. Then I woke up at four thirty this morning because I was driving back into LA to do uh, the junket. Oof. I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I went, "My hair hasn't moved. You're this like, is great." You're like, "My hair hasn't moved. This is." <laughs> All right. <laughs> it saved me like, uh, you know, how long does it take you to do your hair? It depends. Honestly, it really depends. Like <laughs> when I'm like that, when I have my hair like spiky or like kind of like just brushed over and it's a little less like five minutes, like not even like I can kind of get it going uh, when it's long. Like this hair is actually super long. Uh, it's longer than it looks. It yeah. takes a while because you gotta texturize it and like add stuff to it to give it mm. body. Because like I, you know, I've always I don't have thinning hair, but I've always had thin hair. Like my whole life, it's always been thin, straight hair. I just, yeah. that was kind of the curse. Um, but whereas like my brother's hair is all thick and he's like, oh yeah, whatever. And he can do whatever. So I have to add body into my hair. Yeah. Things, things that you learn. Uh, <laughs> when my hair gets really tall, people start leaving comments about me looking like Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. No, I get that all the time. All the and, time. And it's, I used to work with Nickelodeon. So it was kind of like, you know, I was like, yeah, cool. Jimmy Neutron, whatever. Yeah, you could be. Yeah. There's like an old promo photo of you from WWE that makes the rounds. And I'm like, that doesn't even look like Is you. Talking about the one in the gray suit. Yes. Dude. <laughs> I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I can say this. I, th that they filmed, uh, it was before I moved up to main roster, still in NXT, they filmed Raw in Tampa. It's Raw or SmackDown, I don't know. They're like, come on down, drive, and like hang out. It was, my, you know, my first experience going to TV, and like, you know, I walk backstage, and, you know, Del Rio's there, and like, this is like an old school, like older school than what is currently there, and you yeah. know, you're walking around, you're like, oh my God. The night before, I didn't know I was supposed to go there, so I was out, and I was partying, and I was having a great time, and then, you know, get that phone call, and then I was like, oh no, so then, you know, get up the next day, I've got like bags and dark circles under my eyes, I'm trying to make myself, I've grabbed the suit that I had available, and then I went over there, they're like, We're, you're doing promo photos today, I was like, cool <laughs> of all and the days that photo has stayed with me forever i have taken at least 20 <laughs> photos since then at least 20 every pay-per-view they're like just come in and take photos so anytime i get a new suit or new tux i go and take photos guess what photo they use yeah. the first one <laughs> dude my trading card i shaved my beard for one week one week in the seven years I've been at WWE, one week, my trading card is me beardless. Oh, why? I'm like, who hates me? Oh. <laughs> what is Beards are like makeup for men. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, and when you get rid of that, mm -hmm. everybody gets to see what you're working with here. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. Why, why'd you do it? I, it, I, was, I was doing, <laughs> I, don't know, I, just, can I, I was playing the Grinch at Universal. So I was doing it on like a yeah, side thing. Yeah, I think you thing. told me this. Yeah, so yeah. I was doing that at the time, and I decided to go back and do one. But you can't put all that stuff on with a beard. So like I'm like trimming it down. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't like my face like this. You played so many characters. In a lot universe, of characters. So. What were the other ones? Uh, Beetlejuice, Frankenstein, Grinch, Shaggy, uh, tons of like random characters that were created by them. Uh, a character called Jack the Clown uh, for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, what else? What else? I did hosted Fear Factor. I did their like celebration of Harry Potter. I did so many things there. Like it was wow. I played a wizard in the Wizarding World at one point. Wow. So did you always think when you were a kid you were going to do something performance related? I think like as a, at a young age, my mom was like, you know, you're going to do stuff. So I was like modeling and like doing acting and like I. I shot a uh, a film when I was still in like middle school, so like I was homeschooled for a while wow. and did this whole like feature film. And I was doing a lot of. Can we see this stuff. film? I, you know, I I don't. I have no idea. It was about. It was a ghost story about this uh, thing, something called the Pink Lady, and it was like this. Um, 
I don't think it was a Memphis, it was filmed in Tennessee. I don't think it was a Tennessee thing, but I think they filmed it there. Yeah. But it's some urban legend somewhere about the pink lady and like it's just kids, very Stranger Things-esque. Someone's well, going to go look it. for this. Yeah, by the please way. find it. Uh, I, I think it was like Mala Vista Productions. I don't even know. Oh, yeah, there we go. I, that's all I remember because I found uh, my mom sent me a bunch of stuff and I found that in there. I was like, man, I forgot about that. But I played this little nerdy kid, had glasses. And then halfway through the filming, I hit a growth spurt. So I grew like two feet. So like they had to use a stunt double for me in close-up scenes and film me from behind. And all the long, like the faraway scenes, whenever they were running, they would run ahead of me. And I'd be like, wait, guys. And I'd be running in the back just so that you couldn't tell how tall I was. That has cursed me forever. The same thing. Same reason I don't get in the ring. I'm too tall. You're too, I'm how too tall, tall are you? Without the hair. <laughs> Without the hair, uh, only seven feet. No, <laughs> you're like a moss. Yeah, <laughs> with the hair, yeah, you're right up there. Ah, uh, yeah. So, what happened to the acting dream? You know, it, I don't think it was ever. I, it wasn't. It was something I enjoyed, but it wasn't something that I was like, yeah, I, I want to be an actor. I was just like, I want to just want to do things. Like, I want to yeah. go out there and like. I don't know, be funny, get on camera and whatever, but I don't necessarily want to be an actor. Like it's that weird, like halfway point. And then I, yeah. I remember stumbling into kind of the wrong audition. And then I stumbled into like Nickelodeon on accident and then started hosting. And I was like, Oh, this hosting stuff's great. Yeah. I want to do this. And then that's kind of how I went down that route and was like, you know what, this is what I was trying to do this whole time and didn't know what it was called. Had yeah. no idea. I didn't realize what the difference between acting and hosting was, I just thought I was like, oh, you're an actor if you're on TV, but then you're like, oh, okay, cool, you can yeah. host. And now WWE you could be a ring announcer and all this stuff, which yeah. I'd never done before, so. Do you ever think about how different your career path might be if you were growing up in the generation now? Like, because you have so much access to media now. Yeah. Whereas when we were, we're about the same age, yeah. I'm 39, you're 41. <sighs> Man, <laughs> you look great. Thanks. Wow. Thanks. You don't have well, to lie to me. It's okay. No, you do. When we were growing up, if you wanted to be on camera, you had to like either own a camcorder yeah. or borrow one from your neighbor or your aunt or something. Now you take your phone out of your pocket and you're on camera. It is it is wild to think about that because when you look at, especially like celebrities in general now, it's such a different vague term. Like, you know, we yeah. were growing up, celebrities were like, so far away and like there were these movie stars whatever and now it's like you know you have reality tv celebrities internet celebrities you know youtube like people can literally put themselves out there and do all these things um and it's it's a great thing like it's so cool yeah. to be able to see people who you know may not have had the means or may not have had access to some of the things that other people had or new people can now can literally just go hey look this is who i am this is what i'm about and yeah. then somebody watching in ohio is like oh i love this person this is great and then you start building an yeah. audience i think that is so awesome i feel like i missed that wave as far as the uh want to do that stuff um i just like doing stuff to do them like and not well now any... you're doing it yeah you're well, doing, I mean, you're it's a whole but it's a whole different thing like yeah I feel like there's this like weird blur between uh, what is it like um, what are they called? Uh, <laughs> this is the word escaping me. Um, influencers. Oh yeah. And and people who are like in the industry. There's like this weird oh, big blur. Time. So like people reach out to me and they're like, hey, can you come do this thing? And I'm like, I'm not really an influencer, but yeah, well, you have some thing. influence. So does that make you an influencer? I don't see. I, that's what I don't know. It's such a like weird in in the like toy world and like the nerd culture like you definitely have and like when it comes to disney and universal you definitely have some yeah pull. but see on my end i'm just going and doing these you know what i mean but like that's just that's what makes it so good that's why you are so good at it okay because it's authentic saying. and i, I think that in, if it's put on that's when it's not good yeah it makes sense it's also so interesting that like someone who can have millions of followers on be it youtube or tiktok or whatever doesn't have the same notoriety as someone like a, an old school, like a George Clooney or a Brad Pitt or of something course. like that. Yeah, but it's it's that air to them. Like there's this yes. weight to it. Like it's just different because yeah. what they went through to get to where they are and what, like, what the current world is kind of doing with their like influencing that kind of stuff, it's just different. Like yeah. you've seen millions and millions of people have seen him on big screens around the world. Yep. So they'll always have that. Now, eventually, I feel like those, as the generations change, we'll get further, probably further away from that, I feel like, as, as the internet and 
all that goes, I think all the people that are famous now, it'll, I think it'll start, the line will start to level out. Mm. But as of now, like, you know, your grandparents are still alive and that kind of stuff. People who grew up in the old Hollywood and that kind of thing, I think that right now it's still there. But eventually I think those lines are just going to kind of blur. And yeah. Will eventually, everybody will be the same, especially because you have like influencers doing movies now and you yeah, have people yeah. who are famous on TikTok or YouTube and they're doing stuff. And it's just kind of like, I mean, at some point, it's going to have to open up the arms and accept everyone. <laughs> I would think so. It's still fascinating it's to me. It's such that... an elite club. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Not, I mean, not the, the other side, the Hollywood. Oh. They, they, they can, like, it's like an elite club. So. Yeah. It's, it's still so strange to me, like, when I explain to someone who Mr. Beast is. And I'm like, you, you haven't heard of Mr. Beast. I'm like, no. I'm like, he's, you know, the biggest YouTuber. Like, I don't, don't know who he is. I'm yeah. Like, wow. That's crazy to me. But I get it. Bro, honestly, like... I missed that whole YouTube phase, and one of my uh, one of my closest friends, I've known him for years. We used to be lifeguards together, uh, Swoozy. He started in YouTube back when like nobody was really posting on there, mm -hmm. and he was all day, every day. And people were like, "Dude, what are you doing? Why are you vlogging yourself? Like right. this is dumb." And he's like, "Nah, nah, it's cool." And he, you know, did all these videos and was doing all these video game things, and like he blew up, and he's got you know millions upon millions of people uh, watching his videos, and he does all this animation and stuff. But he pushed past all these things. And he's the only YouTuber I knew for like the longest time because wow. I never, I just kind of missed, I was, you know, doing Nickelodeon stuff at the time and I was touring and on the road and I just wasn't watching YouTube stuff. And so he, through him, I've, you know, stumbled onto these other people and I was like, wow, wow, this is so vast. There's so many people out there. There's so much, yeah. so many things to watch. There's just not enough time. And, and whatever niche you want to go down, whatever rabbit hole yeah. you want to dive down, yeah. you could be there for days. Yeah. And TikTok makes it worse because you oh. just go down the rabbit hole of just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then TikTok goes, oh, you liked that? Here's 30 more. <laughs> there you go. It's genius. Dude. How did you even find out about the WWE audition? So, uh, First of all, before we do that, it's nice to actually sit down with you it in person. Is. I, I want to say is. this because the, the first time you and I ever sat down was during 2020. It was, yeah. And it was all digital. It was like the very start of the world shutting yeah. down too. Yeah, it's like right in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to actually sit in front it, of you. I thank you. I say that. I forgot to say that. I appreciate already. that. Um, so I used to work at Disney um, doing American Idol which was Fremantle's thing, and they were whatever. Yeah, like Disney I, World. Yeah. yeah, and I hosted over there, and I was a warm-up host, and as that was going on, Greg, who was here before me, um, he had ended up getting a job when Idol kind of like was closing down. His agent got him an audition for the WWE, and he was like super hush-hush about it, like super kayfabe, I can't talk about it, whatever, and yeah. then you know, he got the job and then he was posting all this stuff and he kept hitting me up. He's like, dude, you'd be perfect here. You need to come here. And I'm like, well, I'm still over here. There's, you know, whatever. And he goes, dude, they're hosting. Like you can do all this stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I think it was roughly 2015 at some point. I think it was like the beginning of 2015. I had heard about that and I'd gone through this process of showing up to tapings. I'm like, hey guys, <laughs> it's me. And then, you know, nothing. And then, hey guys, it's me. And then finally I got an audition. Just showing up just to be there, like you were Greg's guest. Yeah, I was guest. with him. I was Greg's okay. guest, and he can, like introduced me to people. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, you know, when something pops up, whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I, you know, whenever he texts me, hey, we got a taping today. I put my suit on. I run down there. I'm like, hey guys, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> hey. Um, and were you a wrestling fan at all? So when I was growing up, yes. But yeah. at that point, I hadn't watched in years. And it's funny how wrestling fan, like it's very cyclical. Yeah, Be being a wrestling fan, like you can be a huge fan when you're a kid, then. Find it again in your twenties or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I listen. I Undertaker, you know, Ultimate Warrior, Rock and Wrestling, like uh, Hulk Hogan, like I, you know, Junkyard Dog. I grew up in that era, so yeah. it was, you know, I, Andre the Giant was still doing his thing. That's the stuff I grew up with, and that's the stuff that's near and dear to my heart. And obviously, you know, when I was a teenager ish, you know, Stone Cold, The Rock, like that kind of stuff. Like you're like, oh yeah, and you knew yeah. about DX and Suck It. Like there's so many things that like crossed boundaries in pop culture so even if you weren't watching it kind yeah. of brought you back in uh i kind of missed like i don't i didn't i knew nothing at the time of the cm punk era like i didn't i i, I kind of tapped out before that so i didn't know anything about any of that time frame obviously i've gone back and caught up and when i was trying to get the job i was like all right let me go back and 
catch up what I missed on and then go back even further and make sure I knew what I was talking about from before because I didn't want to step into something and be like, yeah, I'm here. What's up? How's it going? Um, Were you also studying the ring announcers? Were you going, oh, that's what Lillian does. That's what Tony Chimmel does. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Howard, yeah, of um, course. Chimmel, Justin Roberts. Um, I, I did watch Lillian and um, Brandy even um, and JoJo. I, I think JoJo kind of slid into it when I first started, like a little bit before, but I was listening to all that stuff. I obviously, because I'm a male announcer, I'm going to pick up more from those, but there's cadence things that I've picked up from Lillian. And, um, it's just, it's, it's interesting where you can kind of like, when you depends on what era in wrestling you you came from on who you tie your ring announcer to. Mm. If you were like a huge edge fan, obviously like, you're like, Oh, you know, Chimmel's my guy. She rated our superstar. Yeah, that's fantastic. Love that thing. <laughs> Couldn't do that now if we wanted to. Um, and then, you know, Justin Roberts obviously has tons of announcements. He was a voice of an entire generation and still is, yeah. still doing his thing. Yeah. Um, and obviously Howard, like just the little microphone coming down, his announcements, at, you know, MSG, like the things that he did. He was a lovely human uh, meeting him. He was just one of the nicest, most genuine guys. Um, getting to pick his brain mm. when I first started was really, really cool. But like, he's got such a unique voice. Everybody had these unique things. So like, there's just little bits and pieces, you know, like any, you take the things and you make them into your own thing and then you go out there and do it. I remember maybe it was about a year and a half ago, I went to a SmackDown and Samantha was kind of, it looked like she was like training under you. Like yes. she did a few, but you did like the main show. Yeah. And now she's like, oh, she's killing she's it, bro! Absolutely killing Dude, it. She's, she's totally so found her voice. So she, when she, um, when she came up, I was kind of doing both shows and just kind of training her in the process. And she would come to Raw and watch me and do a, the, you know, main events and then whatever. But it was, it's not, it's not necessarily about like training her voice because her voice is phenomenal and she's a trained singer and right. she, she had that in her the whole time. It's all about learning how to do it for our TV and mm -hmm. understanding the ins and outs of what they want from us, mm -hmm. what we can do, what we can't do, and the parameters to keep those in. Yeah. Um, but I think once, you know, when she first started, obviously, and it's the same for all of us, like we're very like, okay, um, I'm going to get in and get out. Because there are times where, you know, especially on Raw, where we'll go, we'll start out and we'll do an announcement, but you throw to an AR graphic, then we go to commercial, which means you have 10 seconds to get that announcement in. So it's funny because somebody will be like, oh, you didn't do that announcement good. And it's like, well, I had like three seconds to get it in before. Like sometimes if you hear me rush, it's because I'm on TV time frame. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. SmackDown's a two hour show. So some, a lot of times they don't go to commercial break the same way we do at Raw. So there's a lot of ins and outs. So it's cool for somebody when they're first coming in to see how Raw functions as opposed to SmackDown, yeah. how it works at commercial breaks, how we do certain things. Um, and and it and it's super it's great and the fact that she was able to kind of do that. But once you get out of that first month of like once you get comfortable and you start like whatever, and then she started like well letting loose. I was like, go get it, get after it, let's go. <laughs> She's awesome, dude. I was I was so excited for her and I was like really it's like my little sister. Um, I was just like, dude, once she unleashes, it's over. <laughs> It's over. Do you remember what your actual audition looked like? I 100% do. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> so when I finally got the phone call, um, it was uh, a guy named Johnny Greco, um, who he's a master of, he's, he wears a lot of hats. He's been everywhere. Um, he was working in for the Las Vegas Knights. Is that what it is? Is that the hockey team? Yeah, yeah. And then he's kind of been around. He puts together these uh, programs for in arena hosts. Like he's just, just a great guy. And so he's in there and we're doing this process and Greg's there and you know, they have me ringing out something. They give me the stats ahead of time. Um, you have to memorize them. Yeah. You memorize them. You turn around, they give you a couple seconds and then you do that. And then, um, we did a whole thing where I was backstage and Cause at the time in the PC, you know, like they're doing classes in there. So you're doing your audition when classes are in there and triple H is working out inside the thing next door. And he like walks out and like, don't mess up. Like <laughs> it's an, it's a crazy during that time. It was just kind of crazy because it's, the PC was so small and it was whatever. So they grabbed a uh, bull Dempsey at the time. Um, and he, uh, <laughs> He came over and we did a backstage thing and I was supposed to talk to him about his thing with Tyler Breeze and um, they're like, hey, hey, uh, you need a stall. 
And so they're telling me to stall. So I'm like stalling, trying to ask him questions. And then they're like, all right, we're going to go. And I'm like, all right, thank you for your time. Back to you guys. Like it was that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. So it was a lot of like intensive, like whatever. And then we did um, an, an arena thing where I like walked down. I'm like, what's up, WWE Universe? You know, tonight you're going to see this. The Intercontinental Championship's on the line. The WWE Championship's on the line. Uh, and then kind of putting over the audience, talking to them a little bit, and then throwing to a video package. So it's like little stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know what the process is now, but I, I did. That was what it was when yeah. I first. There's a lot of people that are going to be listening to this that have been working their ass off as a ring announcer on indie shows going, all I got to do is work at Nickelodeon to, <laughs> to get an audition. What have I been doing? Yeah, it's it's so fun. So like, that's the thing that I tell everybody. A lot of people have asked me they're like, hey, I'm doing this. I'm whatever. I'm like, look, the only thing I can say is that it's all timing and a lot of those things. Like yeah. it just had, like it was timing for me. Like my process took almost two years from start to finish wow. from when I auditioned to when I first showed up to when I actually got the call. Cause even after I auditioned, they're like, Oh, we love you. You're great. Whatever. And then I never got a phone call. It was one of those things where you're <laughs> like, I nailed it. It's great. <laughs> Let's go. And then it didn't happen. Um, and then they had actually hired somebody else before I came on and there was, there was a, break in communication, I guess. And so I didn't, you know, I was just kind of sitting there and I'm like, well, guess I'm not doing this. And then, you know, right before Mania in Dallas, I get a phone call and they're like, you still want it? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, of course I do. Yeah. I was actually sitting in Batman versus Superman, the movie I've been waiting for forever. Um, yeah. and it's like a I'm four, so it was like, I know, I know, <laughs> God, it was like a three and a half hour. It was just long. Yeah. And I remember my phone just kept ringing and I'm like, stop, stop stop and then i looked at the number and i go wait and i'm like oh no and so like i left and they're like hey we're getting on a plane uh we wanted to reach out to you real quick but uh, if not we'll talk to you tomorrow and i'm like no <laughs> yeah. it's like wait i missed it great um but yeah the, it all came around eventually the thing is go out there learn as much as you can about the business yeah do indie ring announcing if you can get your chops in put together a package of your self-hosting and like you know, you've put together packages before. It's not just you going, doing the same thing over and over again. Yes. And it's not this like 10 minute long video. Put together something like two minutes, three minutes. It shows your short. range. It just shows your range. Something. A lot of times we'll get videos and it's like, I'm, I'm, uh, hello, I'm, I'm, uh, down here, blah, 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 da, da, da. Back to you. And then the next one's like, hello, I'm back here, <laughs> back to you. And it's the same yeah. thing over and over again. And like, you know, if you're, if you're into, comics or you're into food like hey i'm over blah, blah, blah. i'm doing this thing and then check this out and now do something else that's over here and then show your reporter side or show your uh fun loving side or show your hosting side or your q a side whatever it is just give range in it yeah. because that's the thing especially in now like our current generation at your attention span so short so right. when you open something if it's not you're like okay it's the same thing you know next put together and then you know try to submit the package we have websites you can submit stuff like there's no guarantees on anything sure. but sometimes we hire well and it also seems like wwe will put you in a bunch of different roles to yeah. see where you shine the most so maybe you're ring announcing one show maybe <clears throat> you're backstage announcer at another show maybe you're doing play-by-play -play at another one and it's interesting that like they just test you out to go all right well, where do you fit the best that is it, it is true it's more like I feel like it's not so much as a test. It's just kind of like, hey, you can do all these things. So do all these things. And whichever one like kind of oh, wow. pans out goes like I, I mean, I did a ton of stuff. And then yeah, you, know, you did a lot of backstage uh, interviews that I don't think people even remember a lot of. Those. No, no, no. I think the one everybody re Jericho is the only stuff that like people really, really remember from that. But I was backstage starting in 2016. Yeah. Through the time that I took over ring announcing, I think at the beginning of 2019 or 2018. I don't remember what year it was. It was whatever year JoJo got pregnant. Because I remember getting the call and they're like, hey, you're going back to Raw. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you're going to be ring announcer. And they're like, it's temporary. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> it's just temporary. Yeah, it's still. temporary and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing it seven years? You've been in WWE seven yeah, years? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Time flies. That's, dude, that's amazing. It's wild. And I mean, it was so exciting to see you in the WWE 2K23 game. Dude, it is <laughs> wild. Wild. Like little kid me. Still to this day, I actually went down a rabbit hole the other night because I finally got my code. I got it when we were when the launch party happened here. Yeah. But I was out of town, so I couldn't use it. So when I got home, I like put it in, I loaded it up, and I downloaded myself off the creative playlist or characters uh, from the community. Um, I think uh, what's your status? Put it together like 
took it down. He put it up there and it's just me in this like black suit. And I'm like just wailing on people. And I went down this long <laughs> rabbit hole and I great. built this announce team. And then like five hours went by and I was like, dude, I've been on this game forever. Um, Your voice had always been in the game. No, no, no. So Greg, so Greg had been here the longest. So Greg had been doing it. And oh, so when Greg left, right. I took, this is my first game. Wow. Ever. Yeah. But for a lot of times it was just the voice. Now it's like, we, we see you. Yeah. They do a full digital scan. They put your entire likeness in there. Your entire body. It's crazy. Oh, so you were in like, you got the, the scan with all the camera. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Look, so like, look at make you, a frowny man. face. I'm like, Am I doing it right? <laughs> but they show they they show you what it's supposed to look like, and then you have to like match it, and then they take photos and they match every little bit. Um, it's pretty wild to see your face in there. I look jacked in the game. I look huge. I'm you like look definitely great. much bigger in that game than I am in real life. I feel like your hair is taller in person, though. It is. It is now. It's a different haircut, though. That's I was true. I had spiky hair at the time. Yeah, I'm growing my hair out now. It's like it's long. Are you gonna clocked. keep growing this? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I've got a haircut. Uh, in like two days, so what, I'm not gonna cut any length. Wasn't off your hair like a different color there for about like four days? <laughs> it was a week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it was it was white. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember seeing that and going, "Wow." Yeah, it was white. Dude, oh, I want to go back to that. I love that. Well, could you? I mean, I'd have to get it approved if I did it. I'd have to ask ahead. It's probably of time. more important things to ask for. Yeah, you know, permission for. It's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, when you when you start with some. A company, you know, you get hired a certain way. Yeah. So when you change that, they're like, right. It's not how we hired you. You just got to make sure that like you get approval for all that stuff. So yeah. like if I wanted to do it again, I would just ask and go down that process. And I just haven't gotten around to like wanting to actually do it bad enough to where I asked. <laughs> but there's been like, you, you get a lot more screen time now, which is, is cool for the most part. So like we don't, we used to get in the ring all the time. Now, for the most part, we stay on the side unless we're doing old school announcements. And now we do kind of like how we used to do them in NXT where the lights shift and yeah. change and then the spotlight comes down, which is at that old boxing, like ladies and gentlemen, like it's, it's super, it's kind of cool how they like set that up. But that's, that's kind of the only time, unless we're at a pay-per-view, then we're in like every match. But there, I messaged you a few <laughs> weeks ago when Cena make, made his return. Oh Yeah. Because your announcement punctuated that moment so oh, thank well. Thank you. And I know that for you, this is just something that you do all the time. <laughs> but that made that moment, to me as a fan, feel that much more special. And I wonder for you if you realize the importance of that moment as, as it was happening. I think in the moments, like as they're happening, we're just kind of like, I'm going from segment to segment and whatever. But obviously, it's, it's John Cena. You know what I mean? Like he's this... He's larger than life. Like he's this, and, and he's just a really, he's a cool guy, like in general. And like, um, he's somebody that I've actually learned a lot off of um, through the years of the company. And I was fortunate enough to cross over with him um, while he was still active there mm. before he kind of stepped away. Um, but he always, you know, I, I want to make sure that I give respect to him. And that's kind of the one way I can do that is just trying to help. But he's also, so it's interesting because like John is a, is a big guy on, he's so smart, dude. He's so smart about uh, wrestling, but he's very much like, all right, you know, don't push the crowd too far here because it takes away from the pops in the match or whatever. Like he's very like, he'll ask, we used to sit down before like house shows and he'd be like, Oh, what do you see out there? And I would look at the shirts in the audience. Cause I told him, you know, one of the things I worked when I was working with Nickelodeon, I was really good about looking out in the audience and kind of gauging how I was going to do my show mm. based off of what I saw out there. And he's like, okay, what do you see? And I was like, all right, well at that specific town, the first time he ever asked me that, I think we were in like West Virginia or something like that. And I was kind of looking around. I'm like, all right, I see DX. Um, I see prototype. I see really old shirts, like older shirts. And he's like, well, what does that tell you? And I'm like, uh, that it is a, an audience that is familiar with our brand, familiar with the superstars of before, and mm. not as familiar with what's going on currently. He's like, okay, so what are you going to, how do you adjust to that? And I was like, well, when I'm putting over the beginning of the car, because in the house shows, we basically host the whole thing. Uh, premium, what is it? What are they like? Not premium live events, but live events, basically. Yeah. Um, I would go out there and kind of, 
put over the reason who they're facing, why they're facing them. Like it would be more of me telling a story as opposed to me just going, Hey, the champions here, there are mm. the titles on the line tonight. It can be very vague on some of that. So <clears throat> it was really cool. And <clears throat> he would look around and he's like, how many, how many, how many kids are out there? I was like, it's a kid heavy audience. He's like, okay, cool. And he, and he would talk about how, you know, there's psychology to wrestling and, and all that. And he would just talk, I asked him, I was like, because in the you know performance center when you're learning things they're like all right cool you know you start out and the baby face is hot and then you know there's a cutoff and the heel kind of lays down and I asked him I'm like why do you typically do that and he just kind of said um, everybody knows what I'm about everybody knows me they know what they're getting with me they yeah. know once I go into my thing they know everything that's going to happen after right, that yeah. he's like my job in the beginning of that match is to put over the other person mm. to let them show what they've got to get everything in there. Because once I go, it's over. Yeah. And he's like, it doesn't hurt me at all, but I want to help them like wow. get to the point. And it, it was just his, the way he looks at stuff and the guy, like he knew everything. He was, he's invested in every portion of that business. And it's just, it was really cool. Wow. Would you say that he's the person <clears throat> that you learned the most from? I think between, um, I learned obviously in the performance center, there's guys like, uh, um, Coach Bloom and Terry Taylor, uh, those guys, obviously a lot of their Coach Smiley, um, Robbie, those the coaches down there I learned a lot from. And then um, obviously Scotty Too Hotty, one of my neighbors, like talking to him a lot and kind of learned a lot from him. But as far as like on the road, road learning stuff, I, I definitely learned a lot from him mm. as far as like using what I know and then like what he knows and kind of helping my psychology as far as like working with the audiences and stuff. Um, because so like I, as a, as an arena host, you want to, when you say thank you, you want to, you know, get the crowd crazy and you want to whatever. And like, thank you, thank you, thank you, whatever. And to his point, he says, you know, cause he looks at it from whatever you watched, you know, six matches maybe. And that seventh match is the big match, the one they've been waiting for all night. But the, the audience is gassed, obviously, at that point because they've been cheering all night. They've gotten these crazy matches. So me pushing them one more time before that, he's like, there's ways you can do that and still get what you're trying to get without having to get that, you know, response back. Mm. And I'm like, you know, you're right because as a host, you want – obviously, you want people to, like, cheer yeah. and clap and whatever. But there are ways to do those things without sucking the energy out of the audience before they're about to get these, you know, big things. So he helped me think in different ways on how to do things to where I'm not uh, affecting anything, if that's the case, if that was one of those things. Um, so that was really cool. And also Big Show. Big Show was another one. Uh. Big Show was another guy uh, when I was on tour who really kind of helped me out and – did that and Michael Cole's helped me out and just a lot of Michael learning Cole, from a lot of people. Give Michael Cole all the flowers. I think oh, dude, he's fantastic. He's so good. I think Michael Cole and Pat McAfee, my favorite combo ever. What a combo. <laughs> it's, I, and I, it's very obvious, but Pat McAfee has brought something out of Michael Cole. Oh, yeah. Like this excitement. Dude, this Pat passion. is like, Pat, what you see there is Pat. Pat is, oh, wow. he's just this larger than life, happy, like, He's just a cool guy. Like, you're just like, I want to be friends with that guy. <laughs> Did you get to be friends with that I, guy? I am friends with Pat. Oh, he's a look nice at guy. you. That's great. <laughs> he's, a, he's a nice human. <laughs> Do you look at other ring announcers, like in boxing or UFC, and kind of study what they're doing? Um, or do you just do you critique maybe what they're doing? I try not to do any of that stuff. Obviously, like, the buffers, like, legends. Like, those yeah, guys and, are like... And they're legends on... All you know, completely other ends yes. of the spectrum. Yeah, it's wild. Like those guys will always be. There will never be another version of that. Yeah, and 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 they have their like they each have their own like thing. Like yes. their own say. That's so cool. Um, obviously, like I watch stuff like that, and I mean we can't we can't do that because of the, our constraints or whatever. Um, but. I, I try to watch as many people as I, I'm out there. And then I, I've noticed that there's a lot of people that I've talked to when I first started who are actually breaking into other industries or other companies and other things. So I try to watch little bits and pieces of what they do. I never, I will never critique somebody, never. Because the thing is, is like, I can't tell you how to do your job. And the same thing I told Sam, I was like, I can't tell you how to do this. Mm. I can show you what it is 
you've been a fan for a long time. You understand how this works. I can give you the parameters, yeah. but you ultimately got to be yourself in this and find your way. Yeah. You're not going to be me. You're not going to do my thing. You're not going to do Greg's thing. You're not going to do Jojo's thing. You're, you're going to do your own thing. So it's the same with them. Like I can't tell you how I would do it because it's not how you would do it. Yeah. So you've got to find, listen to all these people, find the one thing that you relate to the most and then not steal like an artist, but like basically sure. yeah, adapt yeah. that portion and then yeah. mold it into you and then put it back out there. Like I look at Bruce Buffer and my parents had never watched UFC ever. And we had it on on Saturday for the first time. And I'm like, oh wait, it's the main event. You guys need to see it's this. wild, dude. It's a complete performance. Wild. And like, it's, I just don't, I don't know what they're ever going to do. You know, hopefully Bruce Buffer's with us for another 50 years, but I don't know what they're going to do when he's not there. I mean, <laughs> what do you do after that? It's just the legends, man. Just, you can't, you can't, they're not replaceable. It's time. It, it's time. <sighs> yeah. That's wild. Dude, the let's get ready to rumble. And the, it's time. Those things are iconic. And, and it's funny because again, they're on totally other ends of the spectrum. Yeah. One is like very like subdued and smooth. Let's get ready to rumble. Very classic. And then oh, I'm yeah. ready to like, he's coming right yeah, at you. Like, when he's in people's faces yeah. announcing them, it's, it's so funny to watch. What is, there was a movie that he, what, what was that? There was a movie that he did where that was there. I feel like I just saw it the other day. He and was in a movie? Yeah. He did the It's Time in a movie. Here we have uh, all the world's information. If only here. we had something we could search this on. <laughs> Let's see. We have all of the world's what information. What movie was that? Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna think back at this and go, man, I can't believe I didn't remember that. It's done. Uh, let's see. Uh, was it I mean here, you tell me. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Hot tub time machine. Oh that yeah. was it, right? Uh, yeah. Wow. And is it, what did he... I don't know. Here, we have all the world's it's, information. It, is, it says Hot Tub Time Machine. I just don't remember what it was in Hot Tub Time Machine. Well, we, I just remember him like yelling like, it's time. He was like right in the camera. And I'm like, I felt that deep in my soul, bro. <laughs> Let's see. We can type in Bruce Buffer Hot Tub. This would be great if, uh, you know, if I had uh, this so everyone could see it. Uh, Bruce. We'll describe it in great detail. <laughs> This, this, does this make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. He's, yes, that's right. He's great. He introduced, uh, what's his name coming out? That was great. I, I keep playing the clip, but I mean. Yeah, you, you we get it. I, 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 I'm here with you. I understand. <laughs> but if, yeah, dude, he's wild. Like, those guys are legends. So, like, yeah. so, well, like, so are you. I mean, I don't consider that. I, I, I feel like. I mean, maybe 40 years down the road when I'm like 800, maybe. But like right now, I'm just, I'm like, st I feel like I'm still trying to find my own way through this whole process because everything changes all the time. You know, any you're... kid that's watching Raw right now, you are the voice of Raw for them. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's wild. That's amazing. That's why. And then somebody was telling me the other day, they were like, think about this. Like, they're like, there's only been so many ring announcers with like WWE that have gone a, a period of time that are actually whatever. And I was like, there's like 10. Yeah. It's wild. And we named them earlier. Yeah. It's insane. I also appreciate that your ring announcing voice is so similar to your speaking voice. It's like an amped up version of it. But yeah. I think there's some people though that put on like an announcery voice. Yeah. I just, I didn't, I did not want to, I mean, obviously you can do the whole, like I, I heard somebody the other day who was doing uh, like a, almost like a Howard impersonation. They were like from St. Louis, Missouri. Like they told, I'm like, why, why that's not, that's not your voice. Like, I don't want it to be, it's like hosting. Like when you host or you're hosting like on a main stage, you're basically doing a heightened version of yourself, yes. like an extended version your of best yourself. Day, yes. yeah. So that's all it is. Ring announcing the same as Sam. Like she's kind of taking her voice and her singing voice and then kind of doing her own thing. So it's just finding your way in that. It's not trying to be announcer. Yeah. Don't don't like don't do the There's a lot of people that do that. If that's your if that's your voice, then yeah, yeah fine. But just know that people are going to go <laughs> He's an announcer, all right. What's the moment or the match that you are so proud of that you were so grateful that you were in the ring to be a part of that? Man, there's a lot. I, I will say like announcement wise, just riding emotion. Cody, the Cody Rhodes thing at WrestleMania was 
awesome for mm. me. Like it was just one of those things where it just kind of happened. Like I didn't actually, I didn't put that much thought on it. Like I just was like, all right, the audience was hype, the, the music, like everything, like that song slaps. So I was it like, does. I was vibing out and then I'm like, all right, let's hit this. And then kind of did a thing and uh, it was great. It worked out well. And, but you don't know, like you have no idea when you do something like that, you're just doing it. And then, you know, people are like, oh my God. Um, but like getting to be in the ring, like with John Cena or Undertaker, um, big show, getting to announce legends, like interviewing the NWO, like I've had the opportunity to pretty much be a part or have words or talk with people that were such a huge part of my childhood. Yeah. Dude, I got to have a, like a 20 minute conversation with Undertaker just sitting around, like wow. just, you know, whatever, like stuff like that is so cool because like, you know, I remember first appearance. Like I remember him coming. Yeah. I remember being terrified and like, you're just sitting here having this conversation with this guy. Um, just getting to be around. I mean, obviously the only person that I missed that I was a huge, huge, huge fan, of, um, ultimate warrior, mm. you know, not there. Uh, macho man, but like, are those the two that if you could announce anybody that who's not with us anymore or maybe isn't wrestling anymore, is that who it is? I would, I think I would go with like Andre. Oh, wow. I think I would do an Andre. Like I, that, I, that announcement is so iconic. Just the camera shots they take, like the, the way it is. I feel like that's one of those things that stands out to me where you're yeah. just like, wild. I would do like, I, if I had to pick my my perfect pairing, because I've done Stone Cold now, yeah, I've done. Uh, I, I would do Andre versus The Rock. Oh man, that would be that would be like my perfect, <laughs> because I've done everybody else. Yeah, um, maybe the Brothers of Destruction. Oh yeah, because I've done them separately, that, but I've never done cool. them together, and that's one of my favorite yeah. pairings. Uh, maybe. LOD. I don't know. Like just some of the old Legends. like road warriors, like some of the old things like yeah. that you grew up. Cause you know, I grew up playing like, uh, the, the video games too, the old, old arcade games. So some of those like, you know, big boss man, honky Tonk man, all those guys are in there. You're just like, ah, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Since you but, memorize all of the weights and hometowns, if I list a few off right now, oh God. All right. can you, can you give them to me? Probably. Austin theory, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 220 United States champion, Cody Rhodes, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 222 <laughs> pounds, American nightmare. Bobby Lashley, uh, Denver, Colorado, 285. <laughs> he is tonight or 283. It's one of those two. <laughs> Alexa, 285. Uh, she is from Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, so the women don't get the weights. No weights. No yeah. weights. Those are just home. Don't be rude, Chris. Oh, I get it. Of course. Bianca Belair. Uh, she's from Knoxville, Tennessee, raw women's champion. AJ Styles. The phenomenal AJ Styles. He's from Gainesville, Georgia, 218. <laughs> the phenomenal AJ Styles. What about a few legends? What about Stone Cold Steve Austin? Oh, man. Uh, we just did this. <laughs> we just did this, too. Uh, Victoria, Texas. Oh, what did he yell at me? It was like two, uh, 268. Really? That two, seems like a lot. Two. Oh, man. Now I have to check. You can check. Oh, go we to, have all the world's com. information here. What are, where are we going? WW.com? Yeah, go to WW.com. Because this is what he got. So we did the we did the 2K launch party, and he was there. And so we did his stats as they're listed, because obviously legend. Um, they're in there, and he's like, I'm not listed that way. He's like, I'm not, I don't weigh that much anymore. How much to say? Uh it should say like 260. In his bio? Eight. Yeah, if you click on it. I don't know. Let's see what it says here. Oh man. <laughs> 252. I was off by 10. Oh, there. Okay. What about one more? The Undertaker. Death Valley. That's that's what we did. Oh, he doesn't have a weight anymore. We didn't do it the last two times. It's like Death Valley. Mm. I was like, okay. All right. Have you ever had a moment where the second you said something, you went, that is definitely wrong? Oh, yeah. So, like... <laughs> There is one when I first started, this is like this forever ago, like we were doing a, um, an NXT live event, and I think like Tom Phillips was there, um, cause I was training in whatever. And it was back when, um, Buddy Murphy and Wesley Blake were just, uh, 
Blake and Murphy, mm -hmm. and then Alexa was with them, and I think they were they used to be tag team champions at that time for NXT, and they they had just split, and they just we just given them like Buddy Murphy and Blake, uh, Wesley Blake, so. I'm so used to saying Blake and Murphy at this point because I've been doing it for so long. And he comes in the ring, and I think I said, I think I called him Blake Murphy or something like that. <laughs> and I and he just looks at me and I go, oh no. <laughs> and he cuts a promo on me, and you know, we do the whole thing, and then I felt so shitty about it that I bought him whiskey and brought it the next day. Cause I think we were in like some other town and I like drove up and I'm like, bro, my bad. And he's, he wasn't like, he wasn't mad about it. Like it was whatever. I apologize. And he was really cool and very good sport about it. But I was like, dude, please take the whiskey. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I felt bad. I'm like, I, I got one job here. Uh, there's been a couple times on even raw where like we go, you know, we go segment to segment. And sometimes we haven't known what's coming next or something changed in the back and the information didn't make it out to us. Mm. So there was one time where the Iconics were coming out and on my sheet it said one of them was working, but then they changed it and then the other one was working. And no one told you. So I said, I think I said, I thought it was supposed to be Peyton Roy, so I'm like, better wait to the ring. Peyton, Billy Kay. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure that's how it came out. But it's just like, it's one of those things where like, sometimes you just don't have all the information. Yeah. And I can't see the ramp. So from where I'm sitting, I can't see who's coming out. So we just recently, within the last couple of years, got a monitor there to where I can see. But if they don't oh. take a camera shot, yeah. I can't see who's coming out. So there are times where people come out with other people or they accompany them and they're not written in the sheet. I don't know they're there. Mm. So if, if somebody comes out, they don't get announced because I didn't know they were coming out. Have there, has <clears throat> there ever been a situation where there's a big return, a big moment, and you know they're keeping it a secret so even you don't know about it? Their music hits or they come out and you go, oh, wow. <clears throat> hmm. Man, it's been a long time. I'd have to really put some thought into that. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure there has been. Uh, I, I think I wasn't, when the big returns were happening, I wasn't ring announcing. So like when Undertaker came back, um, I was kind of like just chilling out backstage. And um, one of, one of um, Scott Acock, one of the security guards, was like, hey, you should come out here. I was like, oh crap, what'd I do? He's like, stand right here. And this is back when the desk was on the left side of the stage. Um, oh, yeah. So I was kind of just standing there and we were in New Orleans. I'll never forget this. And McFoley and Stephanie McMahon was giving McFoley the business in the middle of the ring, just about how bad of a GM he is and how worthless, whatever. And I'm like, why am I standing out here? And then all of a sudden you just hear bong. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I'm right there. The pyro starts going, like the oh, fire, the yeah. flames, and like the smoke starts bellowing. And I'm just like, this is so freaking cool. And I remember sitting on that side of the stage. And so it was the one time I visibly remember like kind of fangirling. I was just sitting there because I've never, I had never seen his entrance live. Mm. I'd never seen it live like that. Um, so I was just kind of sitting there and I watched that happen. And that was one, I had no idea he was going to be wow. there. And a lot of times for most of that stuff, you know, it's better that we don't know those things. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you kind of have to be prepared for whatever's going to happen. You got to know stuff. Um, sometimes you, 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 if the storyline goes, you can kind of figure out where it's going to go. But other than that, we just got to prepare wow. ourselves and be ready for whatever's going to happen. I'm curious, how many suits do you own? <laughs> 30, wow. 40? Yeah. I was actually in my closet the other day going, I got to purge some of these. I got to get rid of some of them. But you, I'm sure you've got something special for both nights. I do, yeah. I got new. Uh, this will air after WrestleMania, anyway. I got, I got some new, uh, some new ones. That's great. WrestleMania is the one time a year where I can actually like. I feel like most of the time when we're on Raw or SmackDown, it's like all right, I have to be very, you know, classic. Like, You're always kind of very kind of. sharply dressed. Yeah, I, I try. I just, it's not necessarily my style. Like, it's more of like very like, hey, this is your ring announcer, classic, whatever. But I feel like WrestleMania, I can kind of go out there and grab stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm vibing with this. Yeah. I really like this. This want to be. This is what I want to do. I want to wear this. So I, I think I think I got good ones this nice. time. I think so. 
can't wait to see it. I, I think I think we're good. You, you can tell me afterwards and let me know. I'm just like, ah, he didn't come through. <laughs> no, 10 out of 10, I'm sure. Okay, okay, I hope so. So good to be able to catch up with you. You too, man. In person. Yeah. And I end every conversation talking about gratitude because it's such an important part of my life. I wake up every day. I say out loud three things I'm grateful for. I do that before I go to bed. So we end every interview with that. What are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Ah... <sighs> I am, I'm, I'm grateful for the people closest to me um, and all my friends. Uh, without all of them, I don't think I'd be able to do all the things that I do now. Um, I am grateful for uh, the WWE and the WWE Universe, obviously, just because it's allowed me to kind of go on this crazy journey yeah. uh, that just continues on. It just keeps going. Um, and, uh, I am thankful for the opportunities that I've had outside of the WWE, um, just to kind of embrace, uh, my nerd and my inner self, like just to kind of like find me and like be kind of entrench myself more into who I am, um, which has been really, really nice. With you saying that, you know how many people are just noticing you have tattoos? Oh, yeah. Lots of them. Yeah. I've got lots. Like so this is, this one is, this is, I, I feel like when we talked the first time, this, I didn't even have half of these. So no, like, you were just starting it. Little Harley Quinn there. Um, little, oh, let me see right there. God, this doesn't go up all the way, but like Nightwing and Robin, Joker, Bad Who Laughs. And then on this side, I didn't have anything, but you can see um, Pennywise right there. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Slimer. Yeah, Michael Myers. Michael Myers. <clears throat> Sam. Man. Beetlejuice up here. I've got Frank. And, I've got all the classic All the way monsters. up to your shoulder? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, two full sleeves. Damn, only thing, I've got like awesome. a little, I've got a little I got here room. that What's I got to go there? Yeah. And then I've got some stuff on my legs, but nothing crazy. Yeah, people don't, that's the thing no. is like when they see me in the suit, <laughs> we were somewhere the other night and they were like, dude, you're like incognito. I'm like, I know. All I got to do is put a hat on and have my my tattoo sleeves out and just walk and people don't realize yeah you know, I just walk right by I'm like it's great it's awesome <sighs> well dude thank you again ah, thanks for having and me congrats on everything thank you you too uh thank you it's been exciting to watch uh your journey dude like honestly like I remember when you were talking about moving out to LA and you know you're like yeah I'm gonna do this I'm gonna whatever and then like you pump out so much content and you're putting out all this stuff and it's it's inspiring to watch honestly like thanks, I wish I like I wish I still had the motivation to do that stuff like I'm <laughs> like I tour and I'm like ah, you've got a real I'm job, gonna go play Call so. of Duty <laughs> <laughs> you got a real job I, I'm just you know trying to make it happen every day me I'm out there playing COD with the boys and then you know <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. We'll do it. Let's do it again at some points. Let's. All right. Holding you to that.